The name Wazuma doesn't seem like it could be a legitimate word. Maybe something to do with surfing or maybe a strange animal from the jungle. Since most vehicle names have some sort of meaning, often an animal, a location, or an anagram, they may provide a window into the thoughts and fantasies of their creators. And who wouldn't want a more intense bond with a six-figure investment, no matter how fleeting? We were curious about the name's etymology because, while facing a Wazuma for the first time, any information would be helpful. The moniker Zuma, which is derived from the Japanese word for storm, stands for the quad's W-wheeled geometry, which in turn refers to the way the front wheels are spaced far apart and the back wheels are situated close together, providing better stability than previous quad designs. Lazarus' beast thus serves as the definition of the phrase, which is, it must be stated, rather fantastic. Any vehicle constructed from the finest components of luxury automobiles will be pricey. The Wazuma is no different. For the price of your chosen Wazuma configuration, you could alternatively assemble a stable of luxury vehicles ranging from impressive to downright fantastic, depending on your desired combination of European origin components. Instead, those expensive cars will be disassembled, and the best parts will be combined to create a new vehicle. The Wazuma moniker is surrounded by model names, since there are numerous such best-of-the-best best configurations, like trim levels on a car or engine displacement on a motorcycle. All Wazumas are quad-frame bikes, which are more akin to vehicles without cabins given their size and power. The Wazuma has been around for a while, but the new V8F gained attention for its chart-topping brazenness. Now, what about the other part of the name? Well, it came from the firm's founder, Ludovic Lazarev. He studied automobile prototypes at the Espace Sparrow School because he was interested in vehicle design. Because of this training and expertise, Lazarus' strategy differs significantly. On Lazarus' website, it is said that the majority of car designers begin with computer software that enables them to modify the required shape. Lazarus, on the other hand, likes to go right to work with the materials. The rubber, plaster, or clay are the objects that receive refinements. A monitor is not. The vehicle's body is finished to Lazarus' satisfaction, and then molds are created for the real manufacturing process. Computers are only then introduced to verify that the technical and mechanical components are in sync with the body. Lazarus claims that despite foregoing the conventional sketching and drawing processes, this method honors the creative aspect of vehicle design. Although Lazarus gained notoriety by altering Yamaha VMAX motorcycles and producing one after another, his skills are not exclusive to motorcycles. Since opening in 1998, his business has amassed a sizable portfolio of other automobile projects. Now, on to the two amazing trikes that we are here to talk about. Let's talk about the Lazarus Wazuma first. To the extent that anyone is familiar with the niche market of French exotic motorcycle specialists, Lazarus is renowned for its ultra-sleek and powerful bikes. Photos of Lazarus often have an unnatural sheen, like a particularly weird piece of film set design rather than a natural light. It's the case sometimes. Because Lazarus are so unique and suitable for superheroes, the company has been asked to make bikes for several movies. The most well-known is Babylon AD, probably because Vin Diesel can appear natural in any vehicle. How, therefore, is a bike as cool as that one built? The distinction between motorcycle builders and customizers is hazy in Lazarus' work, as it is in the work of many other high-end motorcycle designers. Some people don't see a difference between the two, reasoning that it doesn't matter as long as the outcome is satisfactory and people are prepared to pay for it. For a manufacturer like Lazarus, the concept of builder or customizer shifts depending on the specific product in question. To customize a vehicle is to alter one that already exists, though they can be quite extensive, involving upgrades to the body and to the mechanical components. In common parlance, a builder is someone who assembles a brand new vehicle out of pre-existing pieces, whether they be mass-produced or designed and constructed from scratch. In case you were wondering, both strategies do need substantial financial resources, but you probably already know that if you're shopping about. The Wazuma is intriguing since it may be ordered in a number of different combinations and otherwise adheres to a fairly standard Lazarus design philosophy. The chassis of a vehicle is outfitted with numerous high-end and powerful components. When it comes to frugality, selflessness, or sacrifice, Lazarus isn't exactly recognized as a role model. The Wazuma is the most recent and extreme illustration of how everything is hand-picked because it is the best it can be. Now, a little about the Ruwako Trike RF1 LT2. 
there are four wheels, two seats, and a lot of chrome. With a Ruaco RF1 LT turbo tricycle, it's impossible to sneak up on anyone. Passersby hear the overall artistic statement long before they see it. This is provided by the bruising 148 kilowatt, 201 horsepower, 1.6 liter turbo petrol engine. It has four combustion chambers and the noise is expelled through two exhaust tailpipes, both of which are chromed. The RF1 LT2 is the top of the line product for Ruaco. With a maximum torque of roughly 240 Newton meters, the water-cooled four-cylinder produces 148 kilowatts, 201 horsepower. There is a manual five-speed transmission that, in the event of a force-fit connection, comes into touch with the independent suspension rear wheels. Depending on your needs, you can choose a Ruaco trike with two or three seats. Two bench-style seats are standard on all conversions models, which more closely resemble those found on motorcycles. Ruaco vehicles' excessive steering head angles are likewise ignored in these redesigns. The chassis is likewise a different story. For the front wheel of the Ruaco, a trapezoidal steering fork with a central spring element is placed, while for the conversions, a traditional telescopic fork is used for damping. It may take some time to get used to the visible upward movement of the trapezoidal steering fork due to the spring deflection of the fork. The height of the two intersecting cylinders does not change as the telescopic fork conducts its work, so it remains unobtrusive. The gear shifter on Ruaco trikes is inconveniently located on the rear, where the fictitious tank would be. Shifting using the left hand allows you to maintain a smooth, jerk-free movement pattern, which is especially helpful when riding a cruiser. Remove it from the grips on the handlebars. The right hand is used to slow the bike down by twisting the throttle grip. Braking is done with the pedal on the right and the clutch on the left. Even if you're worried about losing control of the bike because you have to let go of the handlebars during the shifting procedure, the Ruaco RF1 will keep going in its obstinate forward-moving fashion. It is possible to drive around bends while using only one arm, for instance, to shift gears. With a length of 3,410 millimeters and a width of 1,880 millimeters, this tricycle is comfortable to ride, secure on the road, and simple to operate. The size of the back end must be taken into account at all times. The following specifications are roughly that of a typical automobile. However, uncomfortable wedging can result fast from carelessness. The Ruaco RF1 seating is comparable to that of a car. Albeit, at greater speeds, the wind can force people into the seat shells. But if you're in a cruisy mood, nothing can stop you from having an endless amount of fun. So that is all the time we have today. Hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel and do hit the bell icon to remain updated about all our future videos. See you all next time.